All right, so that concludes the Twitter part of the questions. Now I'm going to get to the questions submitted on YouTube. And there were some good ones, as there were on Twitter. The first is from Lux Tenox, who asks, Who's your favorite comic book or graphic novel character? This is a great question because, as you probably know, I'm a big comic book fan. And it's changed through the years. When I was a kid, it would have been Spider-Man, without a doubt. A little bit later, maybe Gambit. I was always an X-Men fan. And so along those lines, probably Nightcrawler these days. Uh, Magneto's pretty high up there. Uh, there are a number of Marvel and DC characters that I, I could pick. I, I'm, not, I'm not much of an indie fan. Uh, I don't read a lot of even Dark Horse, uh, for example. But, uh, you know, I like the superhero stuff and I like a, a lot of them. Okay, so the next one is a great one from Cozy of Cozy Comfortable Poetry, which, by the way, go and check her out. She's a great reader of poetry on YouTube here. Uh, who is your favorite poet? And again, y'all aren't necessarily asking me the easiest questions here, but when I was a kid, I would have said Edgar Allan Poe. When I was in college, I would have said Dylan Thomas. I gave this some thought, and I, I really don't have a go-to favorite. I, if I had to say, I would probably say Ovid because I'm more into the ancient language stuff these days and there's nothing by Ovid that I've read that I didn't like and I loved the metamorphoses and uh, cherished them. So uh, he probably has the highest appeal to me uh, in terms of the, the beauty of the language and the, the structurally, of course, the metamorphoses is, is really, you know, impressive because it's so huge. It's such a big undertaking. Uh, because I started to say Milton with Paradise Lost. I like the the epic stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to say uh, Ovid, but I'll give it some more thought. And maybe come back and make a video about this someday. The next one is from my very good friend Jeff right here on YouTube at Master Random Media. And again, by the way, go and check him out, especially if you're a gamer. Or interested in streaming and things like that uh he says you know i got you loaded my man here we go thank you for that by the way uh number one in grade school how much of a fascination did you have with poetry two who was your favorite canadian three worst video game you ever played i love that one four fettuccine alfredo or seafood five rank your favorite lord of the rings films in order that you like them and six why is jeff the best gaming canadian dude you ever met Okay, these are powerful and profound questions, and I'm going to set out to answer them as duly as possible. Uh, as far as the grade school fascination with poetry, not so much, uh, to be honest with you. I don't think I really got into it until at least early high school, maybe late junior high. Uh, but in high school, as I said before, I loved uh, Edgar Allan Poe and I got into the romantics. I liked, you know, Keats and, and uh, Shelley and, and those guys. Um, oh, Lord. Uh, who's your favorite Canadian? Probably Pamela Anderson, to be honest with you. Or Trish Stratus. Um, worst video game you ever played? I haven't played Superman 64. God bless it. Uh, I played Shaq Fu, which again, God bless. Uh, but I didn't find Shaq Fu to be as bad as people say. I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to have to say that I probably don't recall the title of the worst game I ever played. It must've been on NES and it must've been, you know, a broken, unplayable mess. And I, I have vague memories of some really terrible games that I played back in the day in that era, but I, I can't, I couldn't give you a name. And I, you know, honestly, I, I try to kind of screen games and I don't, I don't tend to play games that I think I, I won't like. So, uh, I've, you know, at least begrudgingly enjoyed most games that I've played. So I, I can't really give you a good answer on that one. Uh, okay. Fettuccine Alfredo or seafood, seafood. I, I don't like pasta. Uh, the Lord of the Rings films, easy, uh, fellowship, two towers and return of the king. I thought they got progressively further and further from the source material and, and that's a video for another time. That's a whole other video because I, I couldn't stand the the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films for the most part, except that they had great cast and, and great design. Uh, visually, they came across pretty well. Uh, of course, 
why is Jeff the best gaming Canadian dude you ever met? That's easy, dude. I mean, you're you're the best. No one would deny that. I mean, it's it's a given. Okay, when people ask, like for example, the favorite Canadian, you are my favorite Canadian. That goes without saying. That's what the only reason that I said Pamela Anderson or Trish is because you're number one, and of course everybody else is a distant second. Uh, but that's because you know you're awesome. You're easygoing. You know, fun to hang around with. And you've been there for me, man. So, you know, loyalty goes a long way. You know, I appreciate it. Okay, another one from my good friend Power on YouTube here this time. What was your first non-Tolkien fantasy book you ever read? Have you heard of Kringle by Tony Abbott before this comment? And on that note, what was the first story you ever wrote? And, uh, you know, really fascinating stuff here. Uh, other than, you know, of course, comic books and things like that, the first non-Tolkien fantasy book that I can remember having read was uh, A Wrinkle in Time when I was in fifth grade. We read it for class and I really enjoyed it. In fact, I got it signed by the author uh, and then foolishly loaned it to a friend and, and uh, got it back without the cover on it, without the, the signed cover. Uh, but I have not heard of Kringle, unfortunately. I have to look it up. Uh, and the first st story that I ever wrote in my adult life, because I wrote you know, Star Wars fan fiction and stuff when I was in, in junior high. But the first story that I wrote as an adult was called Nemeta from the name of a Germanic tribe in the Germania of Tacitus. And it was a kind of a somewhat Lovecraft influenced uh, horror story. Tobias the first on YouTube asks, would you consider singing old songs or texts too with your beautiful voice? And uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, I, I have considered it and I intend to. Um, I've done one kind of musical thing on this channel uh, jointly with my old video game music channel because due to joint issues, I can no longer really play instruments and I can't sing very well, but I enjoy singing. So uh, I've done a few video game covers and, and that sort of thing, uh, but uh, I, I'm still working on it. I'd like to do more of that sort of thing, but... I'm not very confident in my singing, like I said, I don't think I'm a very good singer. Uh, but I'd love to do it, so I'm, I'm going to be working on it. Uh, Jamie Reeds asks, when did you start trying different voices? Have you tried to be a voice actor, and what's your favorite food? Uh, I started doing voices when I was a kid, I think because I was a bit of a, a troll and uh, a little punk. And I was always fascinated by the way people speak. And, uh, I felt the need to imitate it. Uh, I have tried to be a voice actor. In fact, uh, I got a small role in a, uh, Star Wars fan production on a channel called There Is Another. Uh, I think I made a video about it here a few months ago. Uh, got to play Count Dooku and, uh, thought it was really fun because I love Christopher Lee. I love his voice and, uh, I love what he did with the character. So getting to be, you know, Christopher Lee for a day was really fun. And, uh... My favorite food is probably pizza. Uh, I'm a Ninja Turtles fan. The Joy of Reading asks, What do you think about the separation common in many countries between science and humanities? I mean, in education. Uh, I think that it's probably a necessary one from a, a pragmatic standpoint because the, 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 the two disciplines, broadly speaking, are... For, for one thing, tending to involve different parts of the brain uh, in the sense that uh, I think the humanities are more creative, maybe more right brain influenced and, and the sciences are more, more left brain oriented. And of course, that's not an exact thing, but uh, I think that's a, a basic way of understanding why there's a kind of a division uh, in teaching the two. I don't think they necessarily have to be separated i guess you know there could be a way that they could be integrated but in my mind it, it makes sense uh you know it's a it's a, a reasonable way of approaching uh the various subjects okay so evan the space whale says i've got four what was the first language you learned other than your native language how many languages do you know i can speak two dialects of chinese and they're the only non-english languages i actually know are you planning on learning slash have you learned any non-European languages? Have you read the Mabinogion? I have Thomas Bullfinch's translation, but I'm mad that he didn't just bother with uh, Maath Vab Mathanui. 
You can't just ignore a solid quarter of the Mabinogi. I agree with that for sure. Uh, the first language that I started to learn, like I said earlier in the video, was Old Norse. The first language that I really developed uh, reading uh, competence in was Latin. Uh, I think the last time I counted, I've studied 20 languages, but of course I don't have real reading ability in that many. Uh, you'll find that, uh, as with most polyglots, uh, I'm only able to uh, dip in and learn what I can and and then I'll, I get kind of you know bored and, and move on to the next one pretty quickly and my biggest hindrance is vocabulary uh, I can pick up on the grammar pretty quickly but I'm not Sheldon Cooper I don't have an eidetic memory so I can't remember all the, the damn words uh, I do know several non-European languages I've studied Japanese and Chinese and uh, I have a special fascination with the Semitic languages I started with Arabic and then did Hebrew, Syriac, and I'm wanting to learn Ge'ez now, uh, along with uh, Coptic Egyptian, and I've, I've studied a bit of uh, Middle Egyptian. Um, I have read the Mabinogion, uh, and I read it in Middle Welsh, and I can tell you that, uh, unfortunately, you're missing out with the, the Math Bob Mathanawi section because Math is great. He's a, you know, a really fascinating kind of a sorcerer, druid figure, and... Uh, it, that was probably my favorite branch of the Mabinogi, so uh, I hope you're able to find uh, a more complete edition. So, whew, I think that was about it. Uh, I don't know exactly how many questions that was, but uh, I got a pretty good number. And again, I really thank all of you for uh, taking the time to send them to me and for giving me some really good ones to uh, kind of uh, blab about here. Uh, hope I didn't go on too long, but I really enjoyed the questions and I wanted to give the fullest answers that I could without totally digressing into video length answers so uh some of them i may actually expand into separate videos hope you don't mind uh some of them i think deserve uh you know a, a much bigger space for discussion so as usual i hope that if you enjoyed you'll like share and subscribe and uh if you found the discussion interesting drop a comment and let me know what you thought uh you know get more discussion going uh, i'd like to hear what you thought about some of these subjects and, uh, you know, as usual, uh, in conclusion, I just hope that you're all doing well and taking care, and I'll talk to you later.